In this lecture, we'll be examining life on the home front in Germany, Great Britain, the Soviet Union, and Japan during the Second World War. This German propaganda poster translates something along the lines of work for victory as hard as we fight for it. And perhaps no nation during the Second World War made greater use of propaganda than Germany. Uh, the Germans were among the first to refine the concept of total war. This involves an interrelationship between the nation's economy, between its technological capabilities and mobilization of the civilian population. Uh, the degrees of commitment to which the civilians bought into the war effort and their output greatly increased a nation's chance for victory. Typically aggressors have the early edge because of the prep time advantage that they have. Here you see uh, Trümmerfrauen or rubble women cleaning up the wreckage of German cities bombed in World War II. Early on Hitler had industry concentrate on consumer goods to keep morale up. He believed he could as the um, economic paradigm once said have both guns and butter. Joseph Goebbels, the propaganda minister, used press, radio, and film in support for the war. Uh, early successes in the war brought civilian confidence up, but doubt and fear began to return. After the failure to knock Britain out of the war, after the invasion of the Soviet Union and the setback at Moscow, uh, but even more so when wounded soldiers uh, wandered the streets back at home, um, the defeat at Stalingrad and the Allied bombing campaign um, it further increased the doubt and fear of the German people. The minister in charge of the war economy in the first two years of World War II for the Germans was Fritz Toth, who was uh, an engineer by training, a very close ally to Hitler uh, early in the war. Um, as the war uh, began to turn against the Germans, uh, Albert Speer became the Minister of Armaments and War Production for Hitler. Uh, he had been Hitler's architect before the war, and he demonstrated something uh, along the lines of being an organizational genius. He was able to increase production despite the war losses and despite the bombing campaign. For example, German production of tanks more than doubled in 1943. The production of planes increased by 80 percent. And the production time for submarines uh, fell from one year all the way down to two months under Spears' watch. Um, he was able to increase production well into 1944, and at which time he was uh, overseeing an economy that was producing enough equipment to supply 270 army divisions at a time when the Wehrmacht only was able to field 150 divisions. He was tried at Nuremberg, sentenced to 20 years in prison, principally for the use of forced labor in some of those factories. He served his full sentence, most of it at uh, Spandau Prison in West Berlin. Uh, by 1943, though, it took until the German economy was on full wartime level, which was probably too late. Um, in hindsight, of course, they, they should have been on the uh, war economy early on. Um, in terms of food shortages, the, the plan was to just exploit the countries under Nazi control to feed Germans and starve Slavic peoples. Uh, there was a significant labor shortage, which led to a number of labor problems. Um, in part, foreign slaves were, were used. They had to use fear to keep them in line. Women were later used um, to fill some labor needs. Um, ideologically, Hitler was against the idea of women in the workplace, with the uh, Nazi ideology of Kinder, Kutsche, and Kirche, or Children, Church, and Kitchen. But by 1943, women ages 17 to 45 were uh, forced to register for compulsory labor. Let's turn now to Great Britain during the Second World War. Before 1940, um, 
The British believed they could fight a war of limited liability with a naval blockade and uh, relying on the French army in the Maginot Line to keep the Germans in check. Um, the economy before 1940 dominated by consumer goods. There had been no stockpiling of food or raw materials early on in this period that they called the Phony War. The British government instead focused on air defenses and uh, civilian evacuations. After 1940 and the Battle of Britain, though, uh, there were a significant number of changes. There was a formation of a war cabinet. There was a significant increase in aircraft production, and all of the British economy came under government control. Men ages 18 to 50 uh, had to serve either in the armed forces or in some industrial capacity, compulsory. Women ages 19 to 45 had to be available for some form of war work. And uh, approximately a half million women served in Britain in a variety of auxiliary military roles. Britain liked to um, extol the virtues of what are called the happy workplaces. Um, the reasons why, uh, after the Great Depression, there was an end to unemployment. Overtime pay was available now. Uh, there were price controls, a little bit better standard of living than during the Great Depression. Uh, Patriotism got a, a marked um, jump during the war. The reciprocal aid agreement, or reverse lend-lease, uh, resulted in aid to U.S. forces in Britain of $6 billion. Um, this was in part to pay back um, material that was um, sent to Great Britain by the United States. They supplied equipment and a variety of different services um, as opposed to cash payments to pay down some of the debt. Um, during the, the war, uh, Americans had a significant presence in Great Britain until Normandy. Um, in wartime in Britain, there were significant shortages, rationing, long lines for few goods. There were air raid shelters. The arrival of uh, seemingly extremely wealthy U.S. troops in Britain was kind of a shock to many British. Um, they had money to spend. Uh, the, the phrase was that many British uh, said was uh, Americans are overpaid, oversexed, and over here. And uh, as evidence of this, about 70,000 British women became U.S. war brides. The U.S. reply was uh, uh, equally cutting. The British are underpaid, undersexed, and under Eisenhower. In political terms, all the political parties involved in the war effort and directing the country focused on nonpartisan support for the war effort and an unprecedented level of support for the war, setting aside partisan politics. Here we have a picture of uh, British sound mirrors. These are acoustic reflectors dubbed by the locals as listening ears. They were built to protect harbors and coastal towns for airborne attacks. They were a form of an early warning system. Microphones were placed at the focal point of the, if re the reflector, enabling it to detect sounds from flying aircraft over the English Channel at a range of uh, 30 to 35 kilometers. And uh, people would be stationed just listening using these sound mirrors. Turning now to the Soviet Union, uh, during the war, the home front in the Soviet Union, Hitler faced major, major problems. Um, as the war unfolded, um, his regime had a history of disregard for human life. He had a refusal to he heed war warnings uh, coming from the very top of uh, American and British intelligence. Uh, Churchill himself uh, tried to warn Stalin, but he didn't uh, heed the warnings. Um, he had a tendency to keep troops close to the border. There were no evacuations or surrenders allowed to civilians, no movement of industry to the interior until much, much later. Uh, much of the early um, Soviet industry fell to the Germans as they uh, advanced. And there was a, a, a significant amount of poor coordination between Stalin and the war cabinet. Uh, for the first time, Stalin had to um, delegate and had to cooperate with individuals that previously he would be inclined to 
summarily dismiss or even execute if they disagreed with him. The Soviets, despite their large population, faced severe labor shortages. Uh, many skilled workers were in the army. The military losses uh, required replacements. Factory workers sometimes were trapped in enemy-occupied areas. Unfortunately, some of the replacement workers were unskilled, uh, resulting in low quality and low efficiency, or lower quality and efficiency. Sometimes uh, teenage boys as young as 13 and 14, men and women uh, of, of older ages, 50 to 60 years old, filling in. Uh, by 1944, women represented uh, approximately 75% of the farm workers and 60% of the industrial workers in the Soviet Union. Uh, more challenges faced by the Soviet Union, there were a million women in the military, in the Soviet military, both in combat and non-combat roles. Political and criminal prisoners worked as slave laborers to address some of the labor shortages. Um, there was a severe food shortage um, throughout much of the war, in part due to the scorched earth policy of the, of the Germans and the fact that some of the best uh, farmland had been taken over by the Germans, particularly Ukraine, uh, often called the breadbasket of Eastern Europe. Food had to be restricted by rationing to people in the war effort. And Stalin appealed to Russian patriotism, calling this the Great Patriotic War, Save Holy Mother Russia coming from someone who had uh, spent a great deal of time trying to extirpate or uh, uh, get rid of uh, religion early in his uh, rule. Soviet nationalism takes on a new form um, during the war. This began to be pitched as a crusade against Germany. Uh, the fate awaiting the Russians if Germany won the war united the civilian population. Churches reopened. This rallied citizens to the war effort and rekindled religious revival. Stalin blamed the government for the early losses and it took credit for the final victories. Not surprising from a political leader. Uh, POWs who had been captured by the Germans were usually treated as traitors after returning home. Sometimes they would be better off staying with the Germans in lousy conditions than to go home and be uh, accused of being a traitor and perhaps executed. This particular propaganda poster translates something like, mercilessly we will humiliate and destroy the enemy. The torn paper document is entitled, The Agreement on Non-Aggression Between Germany and the Soviet Union, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact of 1939. This Soviet propaganda poster simply put, The Motherland is Calling asking Russians to respond to the war effort. Finally, we'll take a brief look at the home front in Japan during the Second World War. Uh, Japanese propaganda tended to glorify these early victories that the Japanese engaged in, and they censored and even ignored or distorted any defeats that came along. Japan had some significant disadvantages. The population was uh, less than half the size of the United States. The industrial potential, only about a seventh of the United States. Um, the United States had about 78 times as many raw materials as the Japanese. And the Japan relied heavily on small plot agriculture as opposed to the large-scale commercial agriculture of the United States. The death blows to the Japanese economy, the fire bombing um, of uh, Japanese cities and the U.S. sub strangulation of the supply lines to Southeast Asia in the overseas Japanese Empire. Gunbatsu uh, translates roughly as military factions. This is the idea that the army and navy were in this uh, perpetual feud that led to a, a near total lack of coordination. Individual um, branch needs were filled without consideration of the war effort. There was bickering over design and production of planes that led to a 1943 production um, output of only one-fifth of the potential. The Army controlled about 85% of the oil supply. At the same time, the Navy had critical shortages. So uh, th these were issues that the Japanese never really resolved in the war. Japan faced a significant number of labor shortages. Many of these were filled by students also Korean and Chinese slaves and POWs. Uh, women finally 
went to the workplace in 1943 to meet some of the labor needs, probably a little too late for the war effort. There was a significant food production decline as the war dragged on. Women, old men, boys and girls replaced draftees in the workplace. Imports declined because of the sub-attacks, especially rice. And uh, even fish, a mainstay of the Japanese diet, were rather scarce with many fishermen in service and uh, other ships being sunk by U.S. subs. Finally, this is an evacuation drill from uh, 1944 of school children in Japan hitting uh, the idea that uh, this was a difficult time for everyone in the home front.